Hey, welcome back to a new year. I hope yours is off to a great start. So far, so good here. It's sunny, it's warm, it's in the 60s right now. It's early January in Texas. We do have a nasty, nasty cold front coming in a couple of days. It's gonna plunge temperatures to below freezing. So I've been out here just kind of walking around, checking on the pipes, making sure I don't need to add any insulation to anything and just getting ready for the Arctic blast. But in doing so, I've seen some cool remnants of some biological activity from this last spring, summer, and even early fall. For example, there's some really cool open aperture burrows like this one. Let's take a look at it and see if we can figure out what made it and what we can learn about it. Okay, so we'll take a closer look at this one. It's not very exciting looking at first glance. It's about the size of my fingertip, but there's no mound around it. So is it a root trace? Is it a hole that something dug in? Or is it a hole that something dug out? That's what we're gonna answer. And to do that, we're gonna look around and see if we can find some more, because they are out here. And here we go, here's another one in the ground, just like that last one I showed you, about a dozen feet that way. So this one too has no mound around it. Nothing has dug soil and piled it up outside. In fact, it looks like soil has been brought in that's why there's no circle of soil around it. That's really curious. Do we have any idea what kind of organism, whether a plant or an animal, can make a hole in the ground without piling the dirt outside? You're in luck. We have a really good idea of what made it. In fact, I know exactly what made it. Because one of the things I like to do around here and anywhere I go is if I find strange holes in the ground or any kind of sediment, I like to pour hydrostone into them. Are you crazy? Is that your problem? Hydrostone is a dental plaster or casting plaster. It's made out of Portland cement for toughness, but it's also got plaster of Paris, so it's easy to work with. And it captures detail really, really well. So I pour the plaster in here, let it set, and then after a while, dig it up, and I've got a perfect three-dimensional cast of that burrow. Bam! Here's one. So this is the ground surface. You can see where the plaster filled in the burrow tube and spilled out at the top. This is the result. This is what that burrow would have looked like inside. It's a very simple, fairly straight vertical burrow. And the bottom has that interesting little beveled shape to it. Now the bevel tells us a lot about how the burrow was constructed. Again, it's a vertical burrow, so it's something made by an organism crawling up and out of the ground. And in this case, it's a cicada. Most famous for that really unique noise they make in the summertime. So a lot of people hear the sound of the rattling cicadas and they know, ah, that's summertime. It's used in movies all over the place. In fact, a lot of horror movies use it. If you've seen things like the classic 1988 pumpkin head, every time the demon monster from hell arrives, it's accompanied by the sound of cicadas like this. They're also the basis of things like Megalon, the great 1973 monster that fought Godzilla and lost because it fought Godzilla. But Megalon was basically a giant cicada and it looks a lot like a cicada nymph. They gave it some wing pads like a beetle, but its head, face, and even its big burrowing arms are based on a cicada. Now we all know cicadas, cicadas, whatever you want to call them. Some people call them locusts. There are a group of insects that have about 3,000 species it's estimated in the world. Nobody knows exactly how many because they haven't all been documented. But historically, they're really, really important. They're mentioned in books like Homer's Iliad and a variety of other ancient historical texts. Their fossil record, body record-wise, goes all the way back to the Triassic. And in fact, I found burrows that look a lot like these cicada burrows in Permian rocks in Wyoming at Glendale Reservoir. In fact, you can see that in one of my videos. This is a section whoops, of a cicada burrow fill, or something a lot like a cicada burrow. And if you take a look at it compared to the one from today, there they are. They've got the same kind of texture, that sort of ropey texture. They're even the same diameter. In fact, this thing looks so much like the modern cicada burrow. If you didn't have the color difference and if you didn't know what the composition was, you'd probably confuse them for the same thing. So that brings up the issue of why are cicadas making these holes in the ground? It's part of their life cycle. So the adult cicada is a flying insect. It looks a lot like a big fly or a bee or something like that. Uh, and they're the things in the trees that make those rattling noises you hear all summer. That's 
just the adult that lives only a few days and then it dies. Very sad, actually. So the adult cicadas mate in the trees and then the females have a big sword-shaped ovipositor on their abdomen. They'll come down to a plant stem, stick that thing in the plant and lay an egg. When the egg hatches, the teeny tiny little larva or nymph, it's called, crawls out and then works its way down, down, down to the ground, burrows in and starts eating roots. So they suck on roots of trees. They basically hang out their entire lives, which can be anywhere from one to 19 years. Underground, these poor little things live for one to 19 years just sucking on plant roots. They suck the juices directly out. That's all they do. And they kind of readjust, they move. You know, as they're growing, they're shedding and growing and enlarging their burrows. But they basically shuffle around underground, creating little burrow networks. When they're ready to hatch, they crawl away from the tree for example, out here into the middle of nowhere, like right here. So we're, you know, about 50 feet away from that tree where it was probably hanging out as a larva. Then they start to ascend. Well, because they have this big network of tunnels underneath, when they start excavating the vertical tunnel, they take that material and pack it behind them, take it down, pack it behind them, take it down and pack it behind them, filling in the old tunnel, resulting in an empty vertical shaft. And that's why these vertical tunnels have that uniquely shaped beveled bottom. What you're actually seeing is the wall of the sediment that's filled in that horizontal tunnel. They fill it in, fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. There's the wall of sediment and then comes the vertical tunnel. So this is that last vestige of the horizontal tunnel represented as basically a pile of sediment. Anyway, after the mature nymphs emerge from their burrows, they embark on a really stressful and strenuous and kind of sad to watch journey because they're really clumsy little animals. But they'll wander to the nearest tree or branch or fence line or house or whatever and start to climb up and they're really clumsy little things. But they finally climb up to a height where they can then sit and their nymphal husk, their skin splits down the middle and from that emerges an adult cicada. The adult has to sit there for anywhere from, you know, maybe about a few minutes to a few hours, depending on the weather, to let the wings pump up with fluids and then dry. Then it flies off and starts the most important task of its life, finding a mate. The female cicadas basically zip around listening for the sounds of the males. And that loud, rattling, classic locust noise, cicada noise here, that's the men rattling these little organs in their abdomen pretty much like guys going to a bar and saying, yeah, hey, ladies, here I am. They're doing their very best to impress the female cicadas. They're yelling their little, not their lungs out, but they're yelling their little sound organs out, trying to draw attention. And if they sound just right, a female finds them, they hook up, mate, lay eggs, and the whole cycle starts all over again. And depending on the species, like I said before, it's anywhere from one to 19 years that the little buggers then hang out underground. Their burrows are interesting because they also serve as starting points for other little organisms. Toads live in the burrows, but also little things like that. That is a burrow made by a sweat bee. And the sweat bee used the abandoned cicada burrow as a starting point to then excavate its own little burrow. And sweat bees lay eggs in there. Uh, their little larvae, they feed them in there and the sweat bee basically raises its juveniles in the abandoned cicada burrow. When the sweat bee is done, it comes out. And a sweat bee is called a sweat bee because it's a little metallic ground dwelling bee and they like to hang around you when you're out sweating in the summertime. And they like the minerals that come off of sweating mammals, like me, like you if you're down here. I should also mention cicadas are super popular uh, with fly fishermen of all people. People that specialize in trout, bass, sunfish, those things eat cicadas. Um, if you've ever fished the famous Green River in Utah, huge tailwater fishery, super famous with fly fishermen. The cicada hatch is one of the most popular sort of trendy things for people to chase. Uh, but these big and little cicadas fall into the water or drives the trout nuts. I know for a fact down here in Texas that the bass and sunfish eat them like crazy too. So they're really awesome insects all around. In fact, in a lot of countries, uh, they're also treated like food. People recoil at eating insects. Ew, why would you want to eat a bug? My answer to that is always, well, if you eat shrimp, if you eat crabs and lobsters, those are arthropods, just like cicadas, there's really no difference. Hey, if you eat popcorn shrimp, you probably like a cicada. And you know, there's obviously a lot more I could say about these really cool burrowing insects that are found in the fossil record, found in the modern record. 
but I really do have to get back to insulating my pipes and getting ready for this cold front. It's going to be a nasty one. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something about cicadas, burrows, even fossils. Uh, I am going to get back to doing some rock videos. I just need to get myself back on the outcrop, so I hope you keep watching. And as always, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you on the outcrop. Take it easy.